Demo Dabble. Hey guys, it's Brian. Getting a lot of Demo Dabbles out of the way tonight for me because it was a stressful day at work. And I wanted to play some video games to kind of cool off and relax. And Scorchlands here is giving me some nice, jazzy vibes. It's just laying it on me. This is supposed to be some sort of resource management game. And you can see if you look to the right, uh, the right two thirds of the screen, we have hexes. We know hexes are very telling in a video game. So let's, uh, let's pop into this one. That was a bird. That's a bird. That's Patrick the bird. Hello, I'm your substitute junior grand tutorial master. My name is Patrick. I have good news for you. You've been promoted. And your new assignment is as grand commander of the Helia Moon Space Expedition Project. Well, congratulations. Let's start by learning how to survey your surroundings. All right, so I can look around with right mouse button and I can zoom in or out with the scroll wheel. We're gonna try looking around for a bit. So let's, let's do that. We're in some downtrodden pathway in a forest. There's some cliffs over there. There's some cliffs over there. And oh, we can get a much wider view. We are in the sky. I think we're floating. Okay, and you can move freely with WASD. I could if my keyboard were slightly closer to me. Let's fix that problem. Should have done that with the last game. And I didn't. So I'm doing it now. For now, we're just going to follow the arrow to our destination. Later in the game, we'll also unlock new ways of travel. Okay, now let's take a brisk walk to your first spire. All right, let's, oh, oh, he's moving with, he's moving with Wazdi. I thought, I thought Wazdi just had to do with, um, the camera movement. <clears throat> okay. Oh, interesting. All right, so we're going to follow things this way. It reveals itself before us. Whoa, things popped up. We need to bulldoze some buildings. Oh, first we're going to be talked to. Oh, I see you're here already. Great. <laughs> this structure is called the Spire. It's the heart of every colony. See the big glowy crystal on top? Yeah, you know what it does? It's magic. It's capable of converting hostile volcanic terrain into a livable environment. And in the right conditions, it's capable of interplanetary teleportation. I don't think this guy's telling me the truth. That's right, we're going to the moon, baby! It's time to put on your moon pants, Commander. Let's go do some moon science. I like Patrick. Patrick's a good guy. But before our little space mission begins, we first need to go over the basics. Looks like some genius decided to build random stuff next to the mountain. We won't be able to mine with those buildings there. Well, let's help the poor guy and level this place out. So we're gonna just start bulldozing from the bottom part of the screen. Hold LMB, wait. Start bulldozing from the bottom part of the screen, F. And hold to bulldoze multiple Okay, I'm not sure. Ah. Booyah. Start a building from the bottom part of the screen. I don't know why I keep saying from the bottom part of the screen. Buildings are free to place. We need to exploit resource veins only inside colony borders. And resource veins can be exploited by multiple buildings. Okay. So looking around here a bit. Okay. All right, so they're saying click this. This is stone. Oh, I think I understand. Okay, let's plop one right there. I don't know what Zamape or Zamape is, but there it is. You really want me to build all of these? And you 
you can cook and drag, so that's cool. All right, what did we do? Production in Scorchlands works on a supply and demand basis. Resources are not stored anywhere. Check the availability of local resources at the top of the screen. All right, so here we've got some stone. The supply of 34 stone. No demand, no import, no export. So now we're gonna build some stone slabs. Oh, this seems to interact somehow. Uh, okay, complex products use up the required ingredients. Minor production deficits mean that everything is being used up and nothing is wasted. Looking for large production deficits will help you identify what is limiting the production of advanced stuff. So at the moment now we have a availability of three because of our 3431 SD. And because of that, oh, okay. So when I was reading stone and stone slabs, I wasn't placing stone and stone slabs. I was placing things that output stone and stone slabs. Okay. Wasn't immediately clear to me that that was the case. Next we have stone tablets. Now that we've got these slabs, might as well. Ooh, what is what is some of this info? I do like how that's tracked at the top. That's pretty cool. A household will boost most other buildings. Buildings gain speed boosts from other buildings and resource veins. Read about the bonuses for each resource type at the bottom of the screen while building. Some buildings will not work without specific bonuses. Let's not forget to place a couple of households to speed up the work. Okay, so households boost production of some buildings just some walls and a roof, not flamboyant, but cozy. So let's see, we're 4, 16, 24. Now it's 0, 12, 30. Okay. That's good. So that'll put us in a minor deficit. Yep. But not of the ultimate thing we're building. The construction of this colony will let us use the tablets we made for making scientific breakthroughs. Let's do exactly that and learn how to create new colonies. Okay. Uh, where am I supposed to be looking? So, let's see. Uh, what is it asking me to do? Oh, wait. Here we go. So, we have these 38 stone tablets. This is what we're going to use for research. Colony construction and supply gathering. Let's do supply gathering first. It's unavailable. Colony construction is also unavailable. Why did I click that? Did I misunderstand? Oh, wait. I... Right. Follow the oh, there's another pointer. Okay, I did not see there was another pointer. Stone tablets are a global resource used to unlock technologies. Inspect your global resources at the top left corner of this screen. Unlock technologies, yep, we saw that. They will increase demand of global resources and keep increasing supply to meet the increasing demand. Okay, so now they want us to come here. So now we can do colony construction, which allows for the quick deployment of new colonies by instantly teleporting them in from a remote location. So we're gonna unlock that. We're gonna start placing a new colony from the top left corner of the screen. Each colony costs some population. Population is refunded when a colony is deleted. Okay. So put a new colony right there. Don't stand in the transporter beam, a.k.a. tissue melter, please. I'm moving outside of that border just in case. <laughs> All right. We're back here. What? Am, what is this? Oh, you can upgrade the colony radius. Interesting. Now that we have some space, let's get to another exciting task, shall we? This time we need to produce some water to supply another colony. So let's make one. More little scientific 
I misread how that sentence was going to go. So let's make one more little scientific breakthrough for today. You remember the steps, right? Yeah. Oh, you just want me to get another thing. Okay. All right, so what does this do? Some folks would say so much heavy machinery just to cut a tree or drain a little water from a lake is too much. Not us. 10 stone tablets to unlock water production. Okay. So now we've got water. So I'm looking at the way, so because of how far away this is, it produces no water. Each hex looks to be, uh, is it one? Yeah, each hex is one, so there's eight. I'm thinking eight's gonna be the best I can do. Okay. Oh, I need to get a supply of 30 water, okay. There's a few sevens. Oh good, these can these can actually overlap just fine. No, oh, that's not quite 30. Um Okay, there we go. Such a good job mining stone, making colonies, and now water. Just like the Grand Commander of the Helio Moon Space Expedition Project should perform. Okay. Now what do you need me to do? Another pointer? Another pointer? Hey, there's already a thing over here. What is that? Now it's finally time for something a bit more interesting than swinging a pickaxe or getting water. Speaking of which, I'm going to get water right now. Ah, <clears throat> and that's, of course, a good old long distance matter transmission. Now onto the difficult part, let me introduce you to Dr. Gunther, our local scientist. Uh, ain't they beautiful? You're probably wondering how these naughty boys work exactly. Well, that's too bad. Explaining that would take a whole day. For now, just click one of the lasers and, place a, and, and pick a resource to send from one place to another. And then the bird brains inside will make the magic happen. Thank you for that deep explanation, Dr. Gunther. So lasers transport resources between colonies. We're going to click any laser to configure the resource transfer. And once in configuration, pick the resource you want to send from the side panels, adjust the transfer rate after picking a resource to send. Interesting. Uh, just after clicking this, right? So, Tanarka and Patsomito. So we're gonna send water, but, oh. Is all this water really so necessary for a space mission? The sauna complex, I mean our colony, will need a lot of water. I didn't actually pick how much water I wanted to send them. It just kind of did it. So, okay. So now we need to aim two lasers from different colonies at each other to connect them. Rotate buildings with R or with shift mouse scroll. Start building from a separate tab at the bottom of the screen. So now we've got logistics tab and the transfer laser. So we're gonna do one of these and it's gonna go right back at you oops missed there we go. okay how are we looking on the water situation samantha we still need more for the jacuzzi i mean even more water is needed uh-huh Whoa, spinneroony. Well, I can walk through the forest. I was thinking I could not. Oh, that's not where I'm supposed to be going. I'm supposed to be going here. That laser's not doing anything. How convenient, someone has already started setting up another connection. However, it looks like we don't have a direct line of sight this time. I'm pretty sure Dr. Gunther will know what to do. He's also our magic mirror expert. 
Yes, I know exactly what we need here. A mirror placed at an intersection of these two lasers. We can't really build any of these babies outside the borders of our own colony, though. But that's why we invented the mirror catapult. <laughs> mirror catapults. We can place a catapult inside the borders and it will safely hurl a heavy construct outside. You can also aim the catapult by rotating it. After placing it, you'll be able to rotate the mirror itself to control how it reflects lasers. <clears throat> Thank you, Doctor. That's very insightful. I simply don't know what we would have done without this guy. Yep, so we're going to spawn mirrors outside colonies with catapults. <laughs> it's just ridiculous to me, but okay. All right. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I see. Right, right, right. Uh, how do I... Okay. Oh, I just need to rotate. I can rotate it now, right? Did I misread that? There we go. I thought so. Okay. Uh... Now I gotta do the transfer. Hopefully all of this water will prove useful for the mission somehow. For now, let's continue on to the last step of our training, combat. Combat? Did not expect combat. You can control units and fight enemies. Deploy units from the bottom of the screen. The main character is also a unit and can participate in combat. A unit's health is represented by the green ring around it. Standing next to a friendly unit will give everyone more green bars. Okay. So, we just, we can deploy a unit. Oh wait, what? The one expedition that managed to come back discovered a huge density of monsters like these. They also brought some rare resources back with them. And after some experimentation, they managed to recreate this simple practice combat scenario. Don't be fooled by others saying it was a catastrophically failed experiment though. It was not. Okay, there may have been a relatively small, cosmically speaking, explosion. Anyway, these guys are very dangerous. We've got to clean them up. All right, so ne standing next to an enemy will give everyone more red bars. If there are more red bars than green ones, that unit gets eliminated. Hmm, okay. Oh, wait, can I deploy another one of these? Oh no, that's just how I control them. Okay. Interesting combat idea. Yeah, what's going on here? Hey, got a moment? I'm Tuluk, our local magic crystal enthusiast. I also do weddings. See that crystal in the middle of that monster cluster? This one is what keeps all these monsters going. If we get our hands on it, the whole cluster should crumble in seconds. So collecting red crystals eliminates all nearby enemies. Doing so also lets you claim nearby scorched lands. Claiming terrain gives you more population to spend on colonies. Okay. Oh wait, what are you? Wait, what does this do? Okay, I thought that was going to do something. Okay, the damage control is going pretty well. By defeating those monster packs, we've even reclaimed some of the terrain back. Not all of it. It looks like there's more over here. Whoa, what happened? 
Looks like there are some tougher foes in there too. You'll only be able to approach them with someone standing next to you and covering your backside. And these enemies will have to be surrounded by at least three of our warriors to be defeated. That pack is going to be tough, but we've got some extra warriors coming to help. So stronger enemies can prevent you from stepping closer. An accessible terrain is marked by a red outline. Make sure that your units boost each other when approaching. Okay. So let's go here, here, and here for right now. Oh, I see the territory starts to move. Ah, okay. Interesting idea. I can just do that. Nice job, Cluster Master. You're a real crystal buster. Now that the crystal has been neutralized, I can show us to the free snacks bar for a break. Actually, that crystal is still very dangerous. You could end up on the moon if you keep holding on it for just a second too long. Oh no! Who knew that was going to happen? Off he goes. He is the true pioneer of our expedition, going in first and alone. We can join him in a more conventional way, though, through the spires. After the snacks, of course. All right, so that was the tutorial. Early thought process is interesting idea. However, I'm concerned about the long play. Can it keep my attention? We'll see. Welcome to the campaign. Here are some tips to get you started. Settle next to stone spires in order to set up mining and produce resources used to unlock technologies and unlock the terraforming technology to progress further. Okay. So here's, here's oops, our world as we know it. I didn't expect the uh, collapsing ground. So here are stone spires. So uh, let's see. Well, I found stone spires. I don't know why it's saying look for it. This is them. Or are you talking about these ones? No, those are ether geysers. Do they just want me to explore the map? Oh, there's enemies that way. And hot lava. Wait, what was that? Oh, I see. Okay. I noticed something lighting up in the lower right, and I was very curious about why. It was just mostly an info thing. Wait, what is this? Oh, toggle the mission panel. Oh, wait, did I not need to do that? Do I need to just open that other thing? That might be the case. Let me head back to where we started. So, is it this? Yeah, that's what I was supposed to be doing. Okay. Um, oh, where am I? There I am. Okay. How did I... Oh, I don't have the technology for it now. Okay. Well, fine. We need stone. Where I just saw... Here we go. I want plenty of it. That's kind of outside of the range. I could probably get a better view if I do this. That'll get me two at least. It's weird that that won't do anything. 
Okay, so that's only giving us 24 to start with. Now I believe stone tablets are what we need, yeah. Okay. So now... Okay, that's using up all of that. So to me, this feels like, this feels like a game where it's just take it easy, relax, nothing major here. There's the radius cap increase we were talking about. Yeah, let's do it. See what else we can pick up here. And then we'll want to do more of these probably. Saw seven. Okay, it's even more stone tablets. There we go, now I got lots of units. Patrick has something to say. We're looking for new recruits to combat the volcanic monstrosities. We have the spires, we have the weapons, we need soldiers. Donnie says he's not going out there. Weird. Uh, let's see, we can't produce ether. We don't have anything in the logistics tab. Households. Let's get some of these together here. Okay. Hmm, I don't know. I think I want to see this one cooked a little bit more before I know for sure if this is one that I'm going to want to revisit the full version of sometime in the future. Uh. Yeah, I'm not so sure it's able to keep my attention currently. So let's actually take a moment here and look up some information on this game. So the developer is Ring Lab and the publisher is Star Drifters. This is available already for purchase. It actually looks like it came out in July of 24, about $12 regular. So let's see, not very many reviews of it yet. The ones that have though is extremely positive in the 90s so far. Uh, so that actually has me a little worried though. For me personally, I started becoming a little uninterested. I like the idea. I think the idea is a good one. It feels like it's a city builder, but with a puzzle format. I can definitely get down with the idea, but the actual play part of it, I'm not sure I'm super into that. So this has all the hallmarks of being one of those, how do you, how do you put it? It has the hallmarks of being one of those extremely niche, titles like if if this is your type of title you should be all in for it i think i'm going to go ahead and move it to my wish list i think that this is going to serve a good purpose for me where uh 
I just want to relax, you know, and I just want to play something, enjoy with minor thinking while also not feeling like, oh, I'm, I have to super, oh, I didn't get the technology for this yet. Whoopsie. Um, I think you guys know what I'm saying. It's just kind of like lose yourself in something rather on the briefer side. So yeah, it's going to go, it's going to go into my wish list. I don't know that this is going to be for everybody though. Good look to it. Peaceful sound. Uh, interesting idea. Low price. If this is your niche, go for it. In the meantime, that is it for this episode of Demo Devil. Bye, guys.